Hi, I'm Simon Roderick from Fram Search, and I'm joined today by Keith Grinley from Macro Thoughts. How are you, Keith? Hi, good morning, Simon. Very well, thank you. I'm heading towards the end of the year, and markets and economies are still busy. Good, that's good news. The, the, the markets and economy are probably, well, the, the market's definitely in better shape than I am. I'm coming off the back of a little bit of cold or flu and a bit of food poisoning last week. So um, hopefully it's all out the way for Christmas. Um, but apologies yeah, if I definitely. if I'm not quite myself. Um, Keith, we've obviously recorded um, sessions like this before, um, but some people may not actually know about you and Macro Thoughts. So if you just give me a very uh, brief intro to you, that would be great. Okay, my uh, my background is from uh, trading and fund management with JP Morgan Asset Management, running global macro fixed income. Uh, we're a company that's been going since. 2016, uh, we work in partnership with our clients um, on uh, they, they range from banks to industry to hedge funds, and we work to enhance and support performance. So that we're always there to, to answer questions when they're necessary and uh, enable clients to, to outperform. So, so I'm going to um, just put some caveats in there. Nothing we talk about today is investment advice, do your own research, all that type of stuff. Um, but we do want to talk very broadly about what you're seeing in the markets. Um, I know, for example, you've been very vocal about the S&P. What, what are the key things on your agenda at the moment, Keith? OK, so um, obviously this has been a year where bond yields and the Federal Reserve have dominated um, the market. Uh, Around October time, towards the end of October, we called for the end of the bond bear market, which has lasted two and a half years. Uh, in presentations and reports and meetings, we were telling our clients to prepare for a, a major turn in bond yields. Uh, we forecast um, at the end of October, beginning of November, that 10 year US yields would drop to uh, 4% by the end of the year and we targeted a 700 basis point rally in S&P, uh, as well as weakening of the dollar. Uh, our forecast, because we, we look at data that makes up the data, we look at trucking and uh, retail, we listen to what retail CEOs are saying, so we can build a picture before they actually become official data. So therefore, our um, our analysis told us that CPI and non-farm payrolls for October were lower than consensus. Uh, we were prepared for the change in bond yields. So we became more optimistic of rate cuts in the US and this would uh, obviously have an impact in Europe and the UK and, this, and central bank decisions. And we've been targeting uh, a rate cut in the UK and the US uh, uh, for May next year um for now probably three or four months uh in which case clients are obviously can adjust their portfolios um either to uh, to go with us obviously if you make those sort of calls at the beginning of, of or the beginning of november as we did um those clients have to have already bought into our track record to understand that when you say these things these are big moves and to be aware that although it may not be a consensus a view that these that these things when they do change can change with quite viciously and uh, a lot of positions at that time were wrong or a lot of uh, funds were positioned wrong at that time which has exaggerated the moves that we've had market's certainly doing very well today um coming back to cpi so i like you like to read and say not to the extent that you do but i certainly do read a lot of kind of Business news, economic news. I'm a big fan of Simon Wolfson at Next. I think he's one of the UK's outstanding CEOs by, um, in a very exclusive club, I think. Um, but he was talking about in their supply chain, significant drops in inflation. Um, and so you start thinking about, you know, where we are in terms of central banks and um, interest rates and everything else. Um, what's your view? I mean, obviously the message we're getting is higher for longer. Um, what's your view on, on rates? Well, the, the message had been higher for longer, but what we were seeing, we, we look at um, industry data. So in the US, for example, we look at rents uh, and we know that in the US rents have been coming down for the past two months, not just stabilising, but coming down. 60 
percent of U.S. cities at the moment have got rent deflation. If wow. you look at the trucking industry, uh, the trucking is industry uh, in the U.S., um, we, we look at um, the, the loads to trucks, so the, how much demand there is for trucking, and that can, that's off around 20% on a month-to-month basis. So we can see that demand is dropping. China has got these issues that we've been discussing in, in previous conversations, and this is something that's been going on since 2017. Um, and that's why you've got the German economy that's slowing at such a, a, a so quickly at the moment. Uh, and obviously, if Germany slows, the rest of Europe slows. So it's manufacturing industries that are suffering at the moment. And what we've also got, um, or we've had to develop over the last six to nine months, is a virtual recession in international trade. If you look at trade figures, uh, both import, export prices and trade themselves, it's all contracting and it's contracting quite fast. And that's why we started to get uh, the Xi Jinping coming to um, going to San Francisco for conferences, coming out of China, going to Vietnam. And for the first time in three years, uh, Xi Jinping's actually gone to Shanghai. So it's he's very um, slow or he's not keen to move out of his his own, um, um, you know, with, out of Beijing. If, if that's happening, and then when you see Yellen and Blinden going to China, it's almost in panic mode to get trade going again. And that's why I think that the the the, um, the change happened at Jackson Hole. It was led by Lagarde's uh, uh, speech at Jackson Hole, and that has moved things on. And that's why I think we're suddenly getting 180 uh, percent changes, uh, degree changes in central bank rhetoric. And we're now with the inverse uh, yield curve that we've had for the longest period on, on record for the US. Um, then we know that the fears of a recession, having to cut a lot deeper, are there. So having the central banks act now is a, is a positive thing. It's manufacturing ser- countries that are suffering at the moment. For the UK, we're a service industry. Our uh, or the, the inflation in the UK. Uh, didn't peak till later, it was October 2022. Uh, and certainly with the strength of sterling, we've always argued, even um, at the time of the Brexit referendum, that the UK benefits from a strong pound. It imports energy, imports food, uh, it relies on tourism, but then tourists are going to come in anyway. So it's it's a, there's anomalies that happened last year, such as, you know, we had funerals, et cetera, Rolf, Royal processions, which obviously makes TV and, and uh, affects spending and uh, and growth, and that which is why we're getting anomalies now in growth figures uh, in the UK. What we need to have, or, or the fears are globally, or is a recession in in real estate. Uh, we're seeing property developers in China, Sweden, Germany, US, uh, all going uh, going bust or, or defaulting at the moment. So there's a major issue in commercial real estate in the US. So, for example, in Washington, um, where you would normally have 25 percent of of offices empty, is more like 40, 50, 60 percent empty at the moment. And the problem then becomes a banking issue. And if the banks can't or are suffering from bad loans from commercial real estate, they're not lending. So it's a tightening of lending that, that, that becomes an issue it, for the UK. The strength of sterling and being more service based gives it an advantage of being able to stand out of that manufacturing problems. So if we start getting in sterling appreciating more, we've got we've got already getting petrol prices coming down. The consumer will gain confidence from lower petrol prices, which will feed into lower food prices, etc. So the confidence uh, for the consumer if it's been falling, it's, it will become more stable uh, going into the new year. Uh, it's going to be a tough time because credit cards are, are getting filled up. And we know from our own anecdotal evidence that people that were able to get loans maybe three or four uh, two, or even two or three years ago may not be given, given those loans again now because their uh, credit situation is not as good as it was back then. And therefore, they're putting more money onto credit cards, etc. So, you know, we we have a consumer which still has to find its way to stabilise and move forward. 
we already hear in the Hasbro's of this world that, you know, the travel agencies of this world are cutting back on staff. You're right about Next. Next had it were one of the last to suffer from from uh, the downturn, if you like, because, you know, where they're pitched for their, for their customers. But if you listen to Walmart and, and McDonald's right now, both of them are talking about consumer. Uh, I have been talking about consumer for some time. That is contracting and, and that is a worry for for going forward, which is why, you know, central banks have to think about where they're going. The Bank of England has to see through short term data and we have to look at next year um, where or, or how much the growth situation uh, develops, because obviously um, supply is, is dictates what inflation is doing, but it's demand that dictates where growth is going. Mm, I think that's it. I think we've got to get some growth back, haven't we, into the economy and I, I, hopefully if there's a change in the rate environment that will that will help. In, interesting as well. I mean, I, I probably had more conversations than I can remember about concerns around commercial property. Um, I think as an asset class is, has been particularly challenged um, of late. Just looping back to China, Keith, um, obviously you, I think, monitor China more than most people I talk to. Certainly got a good understanding. What, what are their specific problems? And I know that actually, you know, they're very, the, the fortunes to an extent of Germany are very intertwined with China. So what are the specific problems that China are facing right now? And how does that affect us on a global level? Okay, well, China's obviously the second largest economy around. Um, if it pulls back on investments such as the Belt and Road, then that has an implication globally. Um, China's very much been pushing into South America, but equally, um, the, the likes of Italy have been pulling, pulling back on that out of Belt and Road. Uh, uh, we now have, uh, well, since 2017, Xi Jinping set down its, his standards on a political level or where he wants the economy to go. And that was obviously a contracting economy. He was moving more towards domestic uh, consumption, away from supporting the top 8% that had all the wealth uh, and, and creating a new economy. Now, he tried on several occasions to achieve this. Then when you, when you get hit by COVID and you're trying to pretend it never happened and, it, and it's still getting or got worse, the economy, uh, or the cracks that were being overlooked, if you like, in property markets um, have become wider. So in, at the end of 2020, you had um, a, a, one of the largest rental companies uh, in China go bust. Uh, you've had the Evergrande situ situation and uh, Country Garden and the rest. You've also got a downturn in manufacturing downturn in in, de in consumer demand there's still um, well over a million properties empty in china um, and chinese growth depends very heavily on construction so you've got a political push on one side you've got a global slowdown on another side and you've got uh, a manufacturing changes that have been going on in china you know that xi jinping and uh, has made a complete change of leadership uh, over the last uh, year, um, that leadership is still politically dominant. So the, the idea of, of uh, quantity uh, driving growth has, has been changed to quality trying, changing, uh, driving growth. Uh, that That is not necessarily a great thing with an economy that size. And now the likes of Xi Jinping having to go to Vietnam, who have benefited from from the China slowdown um, is is another issue because you know if the likes of the US companies are finding that their business and profits uh, are not improving or even shrinking in China, they have to have a really change on their business plan. They also the thought that you know manufacturing or European uh, European manufacturers should start building factories in in and around Europe rather than the other side of the world in a world where you're trying to you know, cut down carbon, it's, it's, it's a, an issue where, where um, globalization has shrunk, partly because of, of COVID, and that is in fact in, uh, in, impacting on international trade. We also have to consider that the US now is a net exporter of energy, not a net importer of energy. So uh, you know, if oil prices go up or down, the US are not so you know, worried about what happens in the Middle East the way they used to be. So that kind of the globalization story 
has been part of why inflation's gone up because you know you're having to pay more to encourage that that import companies now are cutting margins or have to cut margins and the next story if you like is higher unemployment because a lot of companies have been holding on to their employees by by reducing their hours but paying them bigger bonuses mm. we now need to see you know is that going to develop into a unemployment situation or are central banks going to be cutting quickly enough to save that problem um and for china oh, what you do know, you think keith on that do you think because it's, it's, you're right it's a cat and mouse game isn't it if they if they're too slow to cut you might see unemployment spike i think that's that's definitely a, a risk um, do you think they've they've got time to make those cuts to to stave that off, or do you think that's that's unfortunately it might be coming down the, the track anyway? Uh, well, I, I always think that central banks are six months behind the data, and and we look at data that tends to be a month or two before it hits actual data, official data. So we look at you know rents, trucking, used car production, etc. The strikes that have been going on in the US, for example, and and for the UK. You know, we're seeing pay rises, substantial pay rises at a time when margins are being cut. Um, <clears throat> also, small businesses, uh, we talk about real interest rates, real interest rates, 2% higher. And some might argue that <clears throat> real interest rates are not a problem or not, and they should be 2% higher, um, higher than inflation. But if you are a small business, and your borrowing costs are 2% higher than you can actually increase your prices to match your higher costs, and you can't do that. You have two, a two-way pull. You can't, your borrowing costs are rising and you're, you're not matching them, and consumers are less likely to come into your shops or manufacture them for you. So you have a pull for unemployment. You've been worried about losing your skilled staff or skilled workers, but equally, you know, there's a point where you cannot keep people on doing nothing for so long no. uh, i think also <clears throat> i think that coming out of covid there was a lot of lower paid workers that weren't pick up in official unemployment data and are we starting to see that happen in the us with the pick up of the participation rate and i think that happens with happening with the uk and in europe those people that were getting paid you know cash in hand or, or whatever are now having to come back to official uh, to, to official jobs or put in for unemployment benefit continued claims have moved up in the US. There, therefore, um, these, these <clears throat> the official numbers are likely to rise um, over the next six months. So you are going to get a pickup with unemployment probably. Um, it's how we deal with that you know, going forward. With two major elections uh, in the UK and, and in the US next year, they're not going to want to see unemployment picking up as fast and I, that's why i think you'll start seeing the central banks act a lot quicker um i think the fed funds rate will be half what it is pretty quickly um you know we could we you can't justify sub three percent inflation with five percent uh, interest rate so i think that the, the central banks will act quickly um there's still probably a 20 percent risk of qe coming back um, which is, you know, nobody really wants that. But, you know, government debt is so high that government spending is going to be cut and, and unemployment from government workers is a possibility. Um, so, yeah, I think unemployment will pick up, but central banks have the ability to cut rates quickly. And in the case of the UK consumer, I think it can bounce back pretty quickly. I think the UK consumer has always shown it's a resilience, it's, it, it can overlook the issues and, and has a way of adjusting quickly enough to be able to respond to a downturn in the, in the economy. If I know one thing about you, Keith, you always back the UK consumer. You've always championed that. So, uh, and I think I think you're right to do so. I think it's, it's a good model. Um, Keith, thank you for your view today. Um, that's really good. Um, obviously, we're going to post this on our socials, um, et cetera, et cetera. If people would like to join the debate, um, if they agree or disagree with any of the views of, of, of Keith and Macro thoughts, then please do comment. And if people do want to get in contact with you, Keith, how do they do that? Well, we've got the website, um, macrothoughts.co.uk. Um, I've got my email address. Uh, it's Kate Grindley, and that's spelled A-Y, uh, at macrothoughts.co.uk. Um, always give us a call. We're always welcome to um, to discuss markets. Um, and we work on a ethos that we're there to partnership with clients so we're always there to 
answer questions, be there with them, and uh, we get trust from our clients that they're they're open to us and we can be open to them and we can work bespoke solutions to the way they that they want to move things. And we cover all the asset classes from commodities, oil, um, uh, to bonds, currencies, equities, so and, and across all the countries, obviously, G10 and emerging markets. Keith, that's brilliant. It's going to be great to see how it pans out. As I say, if you do watch this um, and you want to join the debate, we'd, we'd really welcome your comments. Um, and in the interim, Keith, wishing you a very Merry Christmas. And you, Simon. I hope you feel a bit better getting into uh, and get away to the sunshine. Make it exactly. cheer you up. That way. Exactly. Take care. Lovely. Thank you.